Welcome. In this biology lesson, we will be learning about every chemist's favorite animal, the mole. We will see how the mole connects the world of atoms with the world of measurements in a simple and intuitive way. Without further ado, let's dig in. Up to this point, we've been calculating atomic and molecular weights using atomic mass units. However, atomic mass units measures the mass of a single atom. One atom has such a teeny tiny mass that AMU are not really useful to measure anything else. Can you imagine a conversation about breakfast like the one on this slide? Trying to measure real world objects using atomic mass units would be ridiculous. When chemists have to measure the mass of real world objects, we prefer to use the mighty gram. However, since atoms are measured in atomic mass units, we'd need some sort of conversion factor to go between atomic mass units to grams. The number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is just that conversion factor. It's the number of atomic mass units in one gram. This number has the nickname one mole. The word mole is just human shorthand for a specific number. In the same way that the word dozen symbolizes 12, the word mole symbolizes 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. The mole is also called Avogadro's number after this handsome fellow. Interestingly, Avogadro never knew the value of a mole. It's named after him because he predicted that one number could convert between microscopic and macroscopic masses. How big is a mole, you may be wondering? A mole is very, very big. A mole is a trillion trillion. If we gathered a mole of basketballs, it would have the same volume as the Earth. If we counted to one mole of seconds, we would be counting for 190 trillion centuries. This comparison really blows my mind. Astronomers estimate that the total number of stars in the universe is about one mole. That's a lot of stars. The number one mole didn't just pop into existence. As I mentioned, it's the conversion between atomic mass units and grams. So while one proton weighs one atomic mass unit, one mole of protons weighs one gram. This makes it easy to use the periodic table to calculate the mass of one mole of an element or compound. But I'd like to pause and recognize that our tiny human brains have a notorious difficulty working with large numbers like 602 billion trillion. If you're ever feeling overwhelmed by using the word mole in a sentence, you can just substitute the more familiar word dozen. It's much easier to think about things in dozens. In section 3.2, we learned that the formula mass is a mass of one molecule of a compound in atomic mass units. Molar mass is a very similar concept. It's the mass of one mole of compound in grams. So the atomic masses on the periodic table represent the mass of atoms in AMU, and they also represent the mass of one mole in grams. It's the exact same number. We calculate the molar mass in the same way that we calculate formula mass, by adding up the masses of each element in the compound. Pause the video and practice calculating the molar mass of oxygen as well as sulfur dioxide. Recall that oxygen is a Brinkelhoff diatomic, so the molar mass of oxygen is two times the molar mass of an oxygen atom, or 32 grams per mole. The molar mass of sulfur dioxide is two times the mass of oxygen plus the mass of sulfur, or 64 grams per mole. You will be calculating lots of molar masses in this class, so keep a periodic table close by. This image shows one mole of some familiar substances, copper, water, table salt, sucrose, and aluminum. Each of these samples has a different mass, but they all contain the same 
number of entities, which is 602 billion trillion or one mole. You can see that the amount of this substance is much easier to work with and might be close to something we'd use on the laboratory scale. The purpose of the mole is to be a conversion factor, which allows us to go from individual entities to grams. During Chem 101 and Chem 102, you will regularly convert between grams and moles. The top two conversion factors will be the bread and butter of a process called stoichiometry. However, it's rare that we want to know how many individual entities a certain sample has. These bottom two conversion factors will only be used sparingly, such as on the next practice problem. Okay, pause the video, see if you can answer these questions about sulfur difluoride. To calculate the molar mass of sulfur difluoride, we first need to know the formula of sulfur difluoride, which is SF2. To calculate the molar mass, we'll take the mass of one sulfur and add it to the mass of two fluorines. Sulfur dioxide weighs 70.1 grams per mole. To convert 100 grams of sulfur difluoride into moles, we need a conversion factor to go between grams and moles. Luckily, the molar mass we just calculated is the perfect conversion factor. Be sure to flip the fraction so that grams is on the bottom and our units cancel properly. To convert from grams to individual molecules, as in the last question, we need two conversion factors. We'll use the molar mass first, but then we need to convert from moles to molecules using Avogadro's number. 